On this week's episode, I convert my Anycubic i3 Mega from this standalone spool holder, which I hate, into one built into the machine to make it completely portable. And then I take on my Prusa MK2S that produced this blob, and I'll show you how I fixed it. All on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I found this snap-on filament holder from user Curioso on Thingiverse, and I thought this is perfect for my i3. I loaded in the main bracket, which snaps to the frame of the Mega i3, and it's a decent design. There's a few things I would change, but the one thing I noticed is that the bottom of this thing really curves, and it threw me off at first. I just put it on the bed and printed it thinking it was flat and I got this the bottom one it didn't even print it rolled up so I stopped it redid it I got it to print and then it warped again so what I did is lower this whole thing a couple millimeters I grabbed it and just Z offset it down two millimeters and all I did was cut the whole bottom off which really didn't matter for the design but it made the whole thing flat and easier to print you can see a little bit of it sticking below the bed and that'll just get cut off those will disappear once I slice this thing. The settings that I used, I used my Anycubic to print it, and I used a 30% fill, and I did generate supports because it's got that arm, that angled arm, and I did a 0.3 layer height, three top and bottom layers, three perimeter shells, temperature-wise 40 degrees on the bed, extruder was 215 degrees C, I'm using some black PLA speed, 60 millimeters per second, so this should be a pretty easy print, and I sliced it and once I did that, you can see the supports all across the angled bracket here, the support, and then some on the corner or the rounded edge. And then underneath, you see it just cut that extra off. So now this thing's completely flat, but I wanted to make sure it was. So I scrolled down the layers and saw that the first layer did indeed put everything down flat. So this thing should hold and stick just the way I want it. And it said it would take two hours and six minutes. Next, I had to bring in the actual spool holder, which snaps into that bracket. And for this, I just, it came in sideways, so I said place surface on bed, grabbed the bottom of it, and then placed it, and then centered it on the bed itself. This, I wasn't going to do a whole lot different. Uh, same settings, 30%, generate supports, same layer height, 0.3, same temperature settings, so I just clicked prepare to print, and it put all the uh, support material all the way around it, including the little snap-in area. This took longer, 3 hours and 7 minutes to print. And here's the bracket after it finished without warping. This is the one that came out good. Now that one with warping will probably still work, but I wanted it straight. I wanted it to look good. So the uh, support itself just kind of pulled right off, except for the little end here. I had to kind of work and break that away. But it wasn't bad. Now this would have been eliminated if he would have just lowered that angle bracket to the bottom. It really didn't need to be up there. But I broke away the, the last bit on the curve, and this thing was ready to snap into the into the frame. Now it's hard to see here because it's black on black, but it snapped right in easily and it held really tight. So the next step was to get the actual spool holder in and the filament or the uh, support just peeled away. This was actually fun to do. <laughs> it just peeled away and I had already taken the bottom off. I didn't film it and it snapped in nicely. So then all I had to do was remove the filament spool from the crappy holder, which I was glad to get rid of slide it onto this guy and then just kind of make sure it cleared to the filament sensor and I had plenty of gap underneath it so this thing worked out perfect I love this design and now I can pick this whole thing up and the filament spool comes with it no more separate filament holder and now on to the Prusa I actually started a print I trusted the auto level it didn't stick and this is what I came back to just a huge mess and I couldn't just use a heat gun on this because a lot of the parts of the extruder are plastic, so I would melt that. So I had to break this away very, very carefully. In the process, I wasn't careful enough because I broke the temp sensor. You can see the wire stuck here. I just wasn't careful enough. I actually ripped the sensor apart. There's the dangling wires. And I ended up taking the whole block out because I couldn't get the nozzle off. It was so tight. And I stripped the set screw for the temperature sensor. So I ended up replacing the whole thing. And then I put a new one on, new temperature sensor, and I even got that rubber sock on top of it to help. And you can see warpage in the little bit of plastic around it. That's from the heat gun for me trying to get this thing free. So it was just a pain. I put everything together and it wouldn't work. And then I found out I had broken the height sensor. 
the bottom of it should have a little black cap like you see here that contains some electronics so it wasn't working I couldn't find a sensor anywhere I had to go actually to Prusa and it wasn't on their site I had to log in and contact them and then it showed up and then I was able to buy it and this thing wasn't cheap I mean it was ten dollars for the sensor but it was like twenty three dollars to ship it they did get it to me pretty quick and I was able to install it and then I printed the frog sample print and everything looked normal again so I was happy my Prusa was back running and printing but oh, I hope this never happens again I don't want to go through that mess getting the spool holder mounted on this guy has been fantastic I love it I've been printing with it for a while it's completely portable that was the one thing I didn't like about this printer having that separate spool holder so now the electronics everything is contained I can move it around just you know like both these guys I can move it around and do whatever I need to do the plastic assembly for the extruder, I never really thought about it, but that's kind of a pain that I can't use a heat gun. So that is a drawback to this, but this thing prints amazing. These have been two very reliable printers for me, and they're a decent size. This one's like around 300 bucks. This one's like $600 as a kit. So it is a better printer as far as print quality. It can do higher temperatures and things like that, but there are definitely features I like about this. So either one is a winner in my book. At some point, I'd like to do an i3 print off and... You know, is it worth the extra 300 bucks? In some cases, it definitely is. Maybe in some people's budget, it isn't. But anyway, that's done, and uh, this was a lot of fun. I'm glad I could get this done. I've been really, really busy and swamped. But thanks for tuning in. Um, if you want to help support the channel, download on the Patreon, subscribe, click on that Chep logo, and check out these videos popping up for other opportunities to watch the channel. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. I'm filming a Friday.